Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker and I have as my guest today Seth Harden. Seth is 18 years old and has already had success in the music world and also in the acting world. But before I get to the interview, I want to encourage you to participate in an event that's coming up on Sunday, August the 25th in LaGrange. It'll be on the square from 2 to 4. It's called Miss Emma's Ice Cream Crankin'. And it's in support of the uh, Emmaus Women's Shelter here in LaGrange. The tickets are $5 and you can purchase them there for individuals. And then a family can get in for a $15 pass. You'll be able to taste a variety of homemade ice cream and vote for the ice cream of your choice. It's very important to support the Emmaus Women's Shelter because they are supporting the women who have found themselves homeless and they support both the women and the children. So we would appreciate you coming out on Sunday, August the 25th from 2 to 4 for the ice cream cranking. All right, Seth, let's get started by saying what were your dreams and visions that opened the door for the world that you entered into in arts and entertainment? Well, you know, um, it all started really with my dad. Um, my dad was always into music, you know, growing up. I learned this later on in life that dad used to rap. Too. Oh, really? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Well, you know, I grew up in the church, um, Course of Praise. Yes. And it was very, very, you know, surrounded by music, good music. Yes. Good, real, real gospel good songs. music, yes. Um, and, and, you know, the, I believe that that planted a seed in me. And, you know, Dad told me that when I was in my mom's stomach, that she actually, um, that they would put a boom box up to their stomach uh -huh. or whatever and uh -huh. actually play gospel songs. Oh, wow. Um, and I, I, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be around music, you know, um, the stage. I always yes. wanted to be around the stage. I didn't know why. Um, if you ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up was famous. So huh. as, as I actually got into this, that changed because now it's no longer fame. I don't really yes. care about it now. Um, money, I don't care about that. And any of those materialistic things, I don't really care about. Now it's the satisfaction of being able to change another kid's life or the things that I went through, like losing my brother and not really having any friends to, or anybody to call on yes. but God. I actually want to share that with other kids that are going through that and say, hey, when I was 15, 14, I went through this too. So let me help you out. This is how I got through it. And, and that's my satisfaction. That's my dream. That's my goal. And I'm living it now. Yes, you are. And so uh, what was the first opportunity that you got to step out? Oh, man. First opportunity. Um, I, you know, growing up, you know, I did... Um, plays and different things like that at school, you uh -huh. know, West Georgia Christian Academy, which yes. is now Lafayette. Um, I wouldn't say that that was it. I believe that when I was at Turnaround Skate Center, I used to go there every Friday, Saturday night when I was little, and they had a talent show at an all-night skate. And I was like, well, I'm going to go for it, you know? Yes. I did it at school, and I won. The whole state, there was a statewide competition, and I won. And, and that's what kind of, you know, confirmed in my spirit, like, hey, Seth, you can be somebody with this. Yes. At first, I didn't care about the talent show, but when I won, I realized that I had something. So I go and do these talent shows that turn around on Friday, Saturday nights, and I lost at first. I was losing very badly. Yeah. Um, then I won second place, and I was like, I'm going to keep going until I win first place. I won first place, and then I said, you know what? I want to see how long I can do this. So I won first place so many times, I was like, I can make a career out of this. Huh. So, you know, I mean, it, that's really where it started was Callaway Middle School and Turnaround Skate Center. Yes. It, it, it was, those are the places where I kind of, you know, stamped my seal of what I wanted to do. Yes. And how old were you when you were doing that? Um, anywhere from 13 to 14. Wow. 13 to 14. So 13. it... It was there all along, wasn't it? I yes, remember yeah. you played the drums, didn't you? For I did. At, at Courts of Praise. I did. Yes, ma'am, I did. Yeah. Um, Matt McFadden taught me how. Yes. All right. And then um, what is the biggest thing that you've participated in so far? Um, I would have to say the movie with Nicolas Cage. 
Um, the movie is called Seeking Justice. It came out last year. Um, it is, you can Google it, you can find it everywhere. Um, I think that that was the biggest, that was, that was the breaking point of my career. That was the, here, now's your chance. Yes. Go for it. Yes. And that opened up so many different doors for me. You know, now I'm actually getting to where I'm doing my own movie. I'm writing my own movie. Um, it's a boxing movie, and it, and it deals with inner city gangs and, and, and different types of things. Um, it's a faith-based film, too. Yes. Um, and I'm actually training for that right now. Um, but, but that movie, Seeking Justice, with Nicolas Cage, really broke the ice. You yes. Know? That, that was probably the biggest thing. And then working with, um, going to see Steve Harvey, um, and then being on T.D. Jake's TV show. Yes. Those were two more things saying, Seth, it's not over yet. You got to keep it's going. just beginning, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Yes, and you are a songwriter. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and ma you have written a song about LaGrange. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Called Down in My City. Yes, ma'am. I love that song. And I was just wondering, can you rap a little bit of that? I know we don't have Absolutely. music or anything, okay. but I'd just like for the folks to hear the words yes, and, and know your heart in that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, this song is called My City. Here it is. I'm from the 706 where the kids eat cake and the parents eat steak and we all sip lemonade on a nice hot day and we all go to church every single Sunday. Hey, that's just how we raised in the South. I can't give y'all too much. Yeah. I want y'all to go check that on, <laughs> out on YouTube and iTunes. I don't want to give y'all too much. Yes, I love that. And also, um, I think it was, I'm not sure what year, but the yes, city honored you by designating Yes, August the 28th is Seth Harden Day. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Mayor Lucan did that because yes, of your work with the young people. And that has um, caused you to organize an event yes, for the city. Now tell us about that event. Um, well, this event is going to be held on August 28th. And that is my holiday. And what, it, what is going on is, you know, I feel like God bless me with this holiday, but I want to turn it around and give it back to God, you know. Um, I'm doing a free Christian music event. We're going to have two guest speakers, um, Jeff from, Pastor Jeff from South Crest and Noonan, um, Pastor Alex Montgomery from Grace Covenant in Hogansville. I have a gospel singer, Randy Hardaway. He's coming to sing, a country singer, Jesse Reese. Um, I'll be there. I have some more special guests. And, and this event is going to be, I, I want to say it'll be historical for LaGrange. Yes. Because I really, really want that day, I, I want, no, I want it because God put it in me. But God is going to move very big in that, that day. Yes. Very, very big. And it's, it's going to be held on the square at 6.30 p.m. Um, it should end around 8.15. It should. But I have some more special guests coming, so it might be closer to 8.25. Um, and th this event is going to be very different. It is all free. And, I mean, everything is free. Um, and, and I actually opened it up, too, for businesses in LaGrange to come out on the square yes. and set up information booths. So if you'd like to do that or you know somebody with a business, contact me, email me. Um, Seth Harden at rocketmail.com and that's H-A-R-D-E-N, not I-N. Yes, okay, and, and you begin your rap songs yes, pretty much by identifying who you are, right? Yes, and I do that. Uh -huh. um, I did that with the first album and um, my first two CDs and actually now on this next album, Unbreakable, I'm actually not doing that as much because at first it was just branding my name. Yes. And and now there's a lot of people in the Grange that ride through the city and I, and I would hear it. But now that I've branded my name, now it's time for me to really come out with more uh, more topics um, as the church. Yes. Um, dealing with judgment, um, different types of things. And, and I'm not really putting myself in the spotlight anymore. Yes. Now I'm taking this album and I'm, and I'm putting issues in the spotlight and saying, this is how we need to handle this issue. Yes. Now on judgment, how, um, what are your thoughts about that? Um, you know, um, when I was um, 13 years old, 
we moved to some apartments in LaGrange. Uh -huh. And I seen a lot of different things. I, I saw, you know, growing up, my two older brothers, you know, they gang bang. So I saw a lot of different things. Um, I have other family members that do so. I, I've seen that life. Yes. Um, but then when I, I had friends that did it, I saw it more. I saw more things and I saw, you know, the reasons why some kids actually drug deal. You know, the dad isn't there. Yes. He's either locked up or he left. The mom is having to work all day, all night. So the dad isn't there to say, son, this is wrong, this is right. Yes. The mom isn't there to say it either. All, all she can say is, live your life, live your life, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and the, the kid, he'll see. He'll sit there and he'll see, mom is struggling. Mom is struggling. So he walks to that cabinet, grabs pain pills, and sells them at school and brings back money and leaves it somewhere in the house so that mom can find it. So, I mean, I've seen those types of things. And instead of the church saying, oh, we don't want you in our youth group, we don't want you mm -hmm. talking to our youth kids, they're too good for that. I think it should be, let me help you out with that. Right. You know, because I've seen that firsthand. I've seen that to where a church won't even really say, hey, I'm here for you. Or God made this right here for you. You can be a part of this. Yes, and I think lots of times maybe the church doesn't know how to address it, but exactly. really it's addressed with love, isn't it? Exactly. And uh, I would just, I know your mama and daddy have really supported you, and I would like for you to tell how they've supported you yes, and what that's meant to you. You know, it, it, it means a lot to me because my parents played the second biggest role in my life. God played the, the mm -hmm. first biggest role in my life. Um, but my parents really played a huge part in my career, my life, everything. Um, you know, they supported me financially when I, when I first started out. You mm -hmm. know, they, they, they supported me financially, emotionally, mentally everything physically you know they were there for me and they still are they still are they are they're, they're great people and that planted a seed in me and, and that's why when i handle business i'm completely honest with it yes you know and that's why when i talk to people i like to be straightforward and honest and when i'm working with other artists i like to say here do this instead of that uh -huh. you know i want to be truthful to people and not lead them the wrong way Yes. Because I had that guidance in my life. Yes. And you know, I, sometimes when our children are young and they want to enter into something, mm -hmm. uh, we might not be as supportive of, as we need to be. We might, we might not realize where they're headed, yeah. but your parents have definitely supported you Indeed. and uh, they are to be applauded. Exactly. Yes. And I, I, what I liked about them is they really didn't know much about the industry. They knew about business, yeah. but they didn't know about the music industry, but they were willing to run with me on this and, and we all learned together. Yes. Now, um, I would like to know, you've been doing this for, since you were 14 or 13? I've been writing since I was 10. I started writing stories really? and poems. Yeah. Um, but as a career, it's, it's, it's been about four or five years. So have you been able to see an impact that you're having? Yeah, actually, the, the biggest impact I've seen, I mean, I've seen, like, there's been grown men coming up to me and they'll cry. And, and they'll say, this, this changed my life, or this changed my life. I mean, there's been women, you know, boys and girls, but one little girl stuck out to me um, a few nights ago. I went and visited Turnaround, yes. the church. Um, and I was in there, and, I, and for some reason I went. God was like, go, 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 visit them. So I did. And I visited the youth and I shared a little bit of my testimony. And one of the little girls, she came up to me and now she's taller than I am, but she has been listening to my music since the beginning at Turnaround. Yes. And I was 13 or 14. Well, she told me that somebody in her family died and at the funeral they played one of my songs. Huh. And you know, for somebody to play a song at a funeral, for the whole family to say yes to that song, yes. it has to mean something. And that to me says, Seth, you're doing the right thing. That's right. And, and that was probably the biggest impact that a fan or, or supporter ever had in my life yes. so far. Yes, and you know, if there's that one that's telling you, you know there are 
others who yeah. haven't had the opportunity to tell you. And so some the, won't tell you. Yeah, and, and so the impact is bigger than you know. Now you've done several albums. Let's talk about the albums that you've done. The, yeah. the first album you did was? My debut album was Masterpiece. I did two CDs before that. Yes. Um, but the, my first debut album was Masterpiece, and it's spelled P-I-E-C-E -E because through the storm, we must learn to master peace. But now I'm actually getting ready to do an independent album, um, and it's going to be called Unbreakable because you look around at the world now and it feels like the world is just crumbling down, it's breaking down. Mm -hmm. But I find that, you know, with God, you can be unbreakable. A lot of pastors would disagree with me uh -huh. by using the word unbreakable. But if you're going through a tough situation and God has already broken you, yes, you know, God has already had you at that point and he has built you back up, you are unbreakable because there, no matter what, for the rest of your life, you will have that in you saying, mm -hmm. Seth, Swanda, Yes. Remember, I'm here for you. You are unbreakable. You, you can't let this break you. Yes, you know your source. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. What's your favorite song that you've written? Oh, um, wow. I would have to say, I would have to say Unforgettable. 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 Was that one of your first ones? It's, that, was, that, was that was one of them off of my first debut album. And why is that one so important to you? Because it it talked about my brother and my cousin who, who passed away. Um, it it went into detail about what happened. And, and it showed, I mean, I even cried when I wrote the song. Yeah. It shows the emotion and the pain that I went through but it also shows that they'll be unforgettable. And through their life, they have showed me different things. You know, they've given me certain morals, certain things to live by. And that song to me is the most personal song I've ever written. Yes. And it just touches me, so. Yes, and you sing it often. Yes, ma'am, I do. Yeah, um, and I was, I was uh, at Mighty Joe's when you yes, did a presentation. And you sang a song that you wrote because of your sister. Tell us about that. So, oh yeah, that's gonna be on the next album. Um, it's not on the internet anywhere yet. Um, it's called God Made You Perfect. Yes. And that one to me is being a teenager, um, you know, I've dated different girls uh -huh. um, from all different types of lifestyles. And one thing that I found in common is most guys disrespect the girl or they never say you're beautiful or or God made you perfect just the way you are. Yes. And I don't want my little sister to be like that. I don't want a guy to come up and come into her life and mean something and not say something that powerful. Yes. So I, I, I was looking at my little sister one day and I was like, man, God made you perfect, you know? I tell her don't look for attention from guys from any person on this earth, you know, mm -hmm. for just only look for God's attention. And that's, that's where the song came from, was it's made to tell every single girl that listens to it, God made you perfect. You know, it, it talks about, um, um, well, I just, can I sing a little yeah, bit? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, yeah, it'll, it'll let's explain do. it better. Um, I'll just do the second verse then. Um, I got a little sister and she means the world to me. So I'm gonna tell you like I tell her every single day. Don't be desperate for attention at any cost. Cause trying to find attention from people can get you lost. And to the guys listening, I hope you pay attention. I mean seriously, who's the better man? The guy that hits his girl and calls it taking a stand or the guy that shows commitment with every action? I'm just saying, I'm tired of guys steady giving in when they can take a stand and be a real man. And to the girls, if he doesn't treat you like a queen, that just means he wasn't really sent from the king and that's true. So um, that song, is really personal to me too. Yes. Because of my little sister. Yes. And so your your songs, they teach too, don't they? And they yes, they put out life. Yes, ma'am. And that's so important in today's world. And you know, when when you hear the music coming from the cars when you're in yes, traffic and it's that and and you hear and it's disturbing, you're like, Oh my gosh. Yes, but 
let's just imagine a world where they're uh, having rap music come from their mm -hmm. car and it's clean and it's it's hey this is Seth Harden <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know that's that's the thing is I grew up around a lot of rap music too yes um, like T.I. and Lil Bow Wow but the thing is is I'll take beats that the world would like and uh -huh. I put messages on them that the world doesn't want to hear but they need to hear. Right. Like I, I just put out a song not too long ago called Still Stand Tall and it has a dancing type beat to it but I say in the song I don't want to be conformed to the wicked ways Lord show me a way just to get away and and I'm talking about these things but I rap so fast. Yes. And what people don't understand is when they're listening to music, it plants a seed in you. It does. When you start singing the words, you're planting the seed into yourself, and it will grow. And that's why I do that, is I put these life messages that God gives me into these songs that worldly people will listen to. Yes. Because you have to look at it like this. A person who doesn't believe in God or believe in church won't listen to a gospel song. Mm -hmm. A gospel song most of the time will not even reach them because they won't listen to it. They have no source to get it from. That's why I want to play the role of the arm of the church. Yes. I want to reach the people who the church feels are unreachable. I want to take my music, I want to take the worldly beats and I'm going to put God's message on them. Yes. And say, okay, see this is, this is how I live. I'm a Christian. I still have fun and this is how I'm living. Now, I'm going to warm you up to gospel music. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Uh, yes, I do. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, the world has tried to make um, things that aren't cool sing cool through the music yes, yes. and really change the culture. Yes. But, but you're taking things that are really cool mm -hmm. and putting them to music yes, and can change a culture that way. Yes, and uh, that's what Christian people need to do is to see opportunities mm -hmm. that they can take to make a difference in, exactly. in their environment, and you're doing that very well. One thing that comes to mind that I want to make sure we mention too is the Father's blessing. Yes, and I know it's been a desire for you and your daddy yes, to do a song where your daddy speaks the Father's blessing over yes, you. And it's evident that he's spoken it over you already, but, yeah. but that would be to affect uh, other people. Yes, you want to talk a little bit about that? You know, something that I'd like to say to that is if you're a dad or a granddad, um, even, even a mom or a grandma, grab your child or your grandchild and say, look, God loves you and I'm going to pray over you. And pray over that child, whether they want to or not, pray over them. Because prayer, I found, is the biggest thing, mm -hmm. the, the most powerful thing you can do. Um, if it wasn't for prayer, I wouldn't have made it through a lot of things I've been through. Yes. A lot of things. And my dad has prayed over me, and he's done it right there in front of me. So that was not only helping my life by him praying, he was also being a role model, an example of what I should do, which is pray. Yes. So. Yeah. And you know, Seth, I know that when you step out and start doing things for God, uh, there are surprises along the way and divine okay. appointments along the way. Yeah. And have you experienced that and want to tell us about some of the surprises that you've had or, or somebody that you met that you never would have dreamed that you, met, you would meet yes, that blessed you? Um, well, you know, it's, I would have to say, though, the biggest thing that really shocked me and, and, and took me by surprise that I never dreamed about was actually the mayor giving me a holiday. Yeah. You know, you and a lot of people from church um, have has always told me, you know, Seth, God's going to bless you with something that you never imagined before. You've never imagined. And I'm like, I have a big imagination. What is it? Yes. And there it was, a holiday, and I never, ever imagined that. Mm -hmm. Never. And that is the biggest wow moment of my life. Yes. 
Yes. Now, okay, let's let's cover again what you're going to do with the events so yes, that if people didn't write down the details, they'll be able to write them down and be able to participate in yes, what's happening on August 28th. So. All right, August 28th, downtown on the Square LaGrange, Georgia, at 6.30 p.m., we are having a huge all-free concert, all-free concert. And I will have different singers come down and different speakers, and you definitely want to be a part of this. And if you have a youth group that wants to come and be a part of, bring them, because I actually have some prizes for the youth groups, too. And there will be free giveaways. So. August 28th, 6.30 on the square. It's free. Okay. And then, um, you know, I just want to say that I believe that our square in the city is going to be a place where people gather to praise yes, the Lord. People gather to pray. Yes, um, you know, I've, I've seen almost like a vision of people on their knees praying. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that the square is just going to be covered with worshipers yes, and I hope that on that event on August 28th yes, it's the beginning of us covering the square with people who believe in God and yes, are expecting him to do great and mighty things in our life and so um, let's just close the program Seth by yes, you speaking to the young people of LaGrange yes. and encouraging them to be who they are in uh -huh. the Lord okay well um, first off what, what I want to say is in high school, middle school, um, wherever you go, people try to make it seem like being a Christian isn't cool. Um, I've done a lot of the things that you see your favorite rapper or favorite actor on TV do and that aren't even Christians. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a very big testimony in itself. You know, when nobody else is there with you, when nobody else is there for you, God will be. You know, um, if you picture yourself in a dark room and you have a switch in your hand and that switch can turn on the light, why sit there in the dark? Hit that switch and bring God in your life and bring light to your life. And I promise you, it's the coolest thing that will ever happen in your life. It's the best thing that ever happened in mine. And it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Exactly. It is fun exactly. when you run with God. And yes. I'm just reminded again of Daniel 11:32 that says the people that do know their God yes, will be strong and do exploits, which are memorable, monumental, brilliant, yes, heroic acts or deeds. And that's what we are to do. Yes, and so I just want to encourage you to step out in your relationship with God and make him known. Thank you for watching. You make the difference because you truly do. Heaven.